Discover a lesser known chapter of history where Christianity, originating in the Middle East, reached the heart of ancient China before fully permeating many parts of Europe. This is the untold story of the Nestorian Church's remarkable journey along the Silk Road, finding a unique foothold during the flourishing era of the Tang Dynasty. Let's journey back to the 7th century to explore the intriguing arrival of the Nestorian Church in China. In the 7th century, a Christian group called the Nestorian Church reached China, a land known for its rich cultural mix. The leader of this groundbreaking mission was Alapen, a monk from Syria. He arrived in the Chinese capital, Chang'an, in 635. Emperor Taizong, the ruler of the Tang Dynasty, was known for his open-mindedness. He was intrigued by the Nestorian faith and the foreign monk who brought it. Alapen was given an audience with the emperor, where he presented his teachings. The emperor, finding no fault in these teachings, granted Alapen the permission to establish the first Nestorian church in China. And so the Nestorian church was born in China. The Nestorians built monasteries, translated scriptures, and began to integrate their faith with Chinese culture. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. The Nestorians faced their fair share of challenges. They had to navigate through the intricacies of Chinese bureaucracy, overcome language barriers, and deal with the skepticism of a society that had its own well-established religious traditions. How do we know these events actually happened? Fast forward to the year 781 AD, and a stone monument tells a fascinating tale. Discovered in the city of Xi'an in the year 1625, the Nestorian stele, as it's now known, provided irrefutable proof of the Nestorian church's existence in China. Standing nearly three meters tall and inscribed with over a thousand characters, this ancient testament is an intriguing historical puzzle piece. The inscriptions etched into its surface reveal much about the Nestorian church's history in China. They paint a picture of a faith that journeyed thousands of miles along the Silk Road adapting and integrating into Chinese society. The stele tell stories of Nestorian monks engaging in public debates, performing miracles and even serving at the imperial court. Through these inscriptions we see a church that was not merely surviving but thriving in a land far from its roots. The Nestorian church, once a foreign faith, had now become a part of China's diverse religious landscape. But things changed when Emperor Wu Zong ordered all foreign religions to leave in 845. This, along with the fall of the Tang Dynasty, led to the decline of the Nestorian Church. The Church made a comeback under the Mongol Yuan Dynasty, enjoying a higher status, but mostly among foreign residents. They also faced competition from Catholic missionaries, which led to conflicts. By the mid-14th century, the Nestorian Church faced tough times, including the murder of a bishop and forced conversions. With the rise of the Ming Dynasty in the 1350s, foreign Christians were likely pushed out of China. Political upheaval and religious suppression led to its gradual decline, and it eventually disappeared from China. Despite its end, the Nestorian Church had a lasting impact. It brought new Christian ideas and words to China, using Buddhist terms to make them understandable. They also shared technology and medical knowledge from the Near East. Today Christianity has a significant presence in China. Some estimate that there might be 85 to 125 million Christians in China today. The Nestorian Church's early efforts set the foundation for the future church that would one day thrive in China. The tale of the Nestorian Church in China is more than just history. It's a story of faithful Christians who believed in the hope of the gospel for all nations. What can we learn from this part of our Christian history? Subscribe and comment below.